Hello, good day, and welcome to NATS part 14. And today we're going to look at a final feature in NATS Jetstream, and that's object storage. So let's jump in. So if we go to the NATS website and we click on the documentation for Jetstream, and then we jump down to the section on object store, we'll see that it says the following about object store. The object store is very similar to the key value store in that you put and get data using a key. The big difference between object store and key value store, however, is that in key value store, the value is a message and therefore limited in size to one megabytes by default. While the object store allows for the storage of objects that can be of any size. So here an object is anything. The object store implements a chunking mechanism, allowing you, for example, to store and retrieve files. Again, it could be anything though, right? It doesn't have to be files. It's just data for NAT. Even our messages just used to be data. Anyway, the object of any size by associating them with a path and file name, for example, as the key. That could be your key, the path and the file name. And we'll see something similar in our example. So if we go to the command line and we run the NATS command, we'll see that we have the subcommand for object. And if we run NATS object, we'll see it all. We have a few other op operations that we can perform or subcommands. So that's going to be the add command to be able to add a new object store bucket. So a bucket being a collection of similar objects or objects you want to manage in the same way. Put, so you can put an object in that store or in that bucket. Delete, so you can remove an object from that bucket or delete the bucket itself. Get, so you can retrieve that object. Here it says file, but again, I'm just gonna say object. You can get info about the object or the bucket itself. You can list all the buckets or the contents of a bucket. And notice all these are very similar to key value store and streams, right? Seal where you can prevent further changes to that bucket. So if you don't want anyone to be able to remove any objects from that bucket or to be able to add anything. And of course, you can watch a bucket for changes. So hopefully you can see how these things can be combined in a way that allow you to build some really interesting applications. Just as before, we're gonna watch for a list of buckets that we create. And then we're gonna be very specific and watch for the objects within this bucket called songs. We haven't created it yet, but we're going to watch anyway. And then once we create the um, song bucket, we, this, we should, this command should not give us an error. So again, creating a bucket is very simple. It's just that object add and songs. Notice how we see similar kind of outputs for when we create a key value store in terms of replicas, time to live, and so on. But notice there are other things too, like seal flag. And then there's the stream name. Now it has obj underscore in front of the name, just like key value at kv underscore. We're not going to use the stream ls command with a minus a option to actually see this because it tells us here and you know to do that already. So that's fine. So what about um, us putting an object into our bucket? Notice our song bucket was never used and it shows you when it was created. And of course, occupying zero bytes. So if we say um, ls, for example, in my directory, we'll see that I have this music directory, a mass configuration file, and a video directory. Um, I can do fd to list everything, including the files and the subdirectories. Now, one of the things I can do is say that I want to store um, these files in buckets. And we'll get to that in our examples. But for now, let's just do something very simple and store our configuration file into a bucket. Uh, so we do that object put and, um, oh man, I supposed to put the name of the bucket. So let's go back and put the name of the bucket. So it's gonna be songs. Again, this is not a song, but I just want to show you how easy it is to add something. NAT doesn't care what it is. In this case, it was a text file, but NAT doesn't care. Just see, this file has 17, um, 13 bytes, and it needs just one chunk for it. We don't know how big a chunk size is. That doesn't matter. NAT is taking care of that for us. It gives us the checksum, you know, SHA-256 
value for us to be able to say this is a checksum that represents this data that is stored or the file. And then um, we can see in the middle part of the screen that it shows us the key name there is the file name and the data, money bytes and the time. Okay, very simple. It should also show us the total usage of our bucket. We can remove um, this object from this bucket again by um, specifying the bucket and the key for that object, which in our case, since we're dealing with file, we're going to use the file name as the key, but you don't have to, right? Um, NAS doesn't really care, it just needs a key. So let's go into our music directory. And within here, we see we have two subdirectory, one called Exodus and Kaya. And so what I can do is use FD command to list all the files in this directory. If I wanted to just list the files alone and not the directories, I can do minus T and F options to say list files. Then I could use the minus X option to run a command. And the command I want to run is not object put into songs, uh, whichever file you found, the full path and file name. And so this is going to look like a directory name. So our key is going to look like a directory name slash the file name. And so that's okay. It doesn't really matter for us. That's just how we want to store it. So now you can see within NATS, we have this file store, these file stores are object, and the key for each file look like the path and the name. And if we were building an application, we can simply, like when we we're building our music streaming um, application in our previous example, we can add this information to the key value to say where should I get the actual data? Because remember, when we were storing the key and value, we are just storing metadata about the song that's to be streamed or the video that's available, but we didn't store any information about the actual song itself. So now you see where we can have this information stored. And we don't need to update this, unlike the key where we keep updating with the current song and the next song and so on. We don't need to do that with the files. Once we put it in there, that's it. It stays there. And so the client can now fetch the data whenever they want for whichever song or video they need to play. So let's download one of these um, songs. So let's select this one, Kaya um, Track 2. And so I highlight the entire key. And if I were to go back to my command line, and if we do ls, you'll see that this file is not here. Remember, it's in the subdirectory Kaya. But I'm going to get it and store it in this directory. So I say get and from the songs bucket, and I give it the key. And once I press enter, note it, it downloads the entire song, and I put it in this directory, which is the current directory. And if I do ls again, you'll see that the file is here. And there's the file. And so now I have downloaded that entire file from object store. Now, if I had my NAT server in the cloud somewhere, I can easily push things and store it there and then download it from anywhere else I want in the world. But let's clean up and let's go see how we can store even larger files, like video files. So I go into my videos directory. And so I don't need to, but I'm gonna remove the songs bucket for now. Um, and so let's just, instead, we're still listing all buckets, but let's just list the objects in what we're gonna call videos um, bucket. We haven't created that either. So let's create the videos bucket. So let's do add videos. And notice, very easy, just as before, nothing new, same thing. And now we want to add all the video files in this um, in the subdirectory in the subdirectory. So once again, I'll use FD to help me do this. And so nothing different. Um, you can do this one command at a time if you like. I just use tools that I know. And so the FD command um, knows how to list all the files in this directory and subdirectories. And I'm telling you to put it in the videos. The open or close curly braces there just means the file name with the path. Anyway, so that's been uploaded. Now, the three files I here, have here, this movie, is about 30 gigs. So I'll fast forward a little bit so you don't have to see all this boring stuff. Now you can see that it's finished. And you can see here that we're listing the videos in that, and the objects in that video bucket, and you can see the three files are listed there. And from the terminal, you can see all information about the files, 
how many checksum and that sort of thing. Again, we don't need to worry about a checksum. We can just trust that it knows how to chunk the data and store it. Again, I'm going to try and download the smallest file here just so we don't have to spend too much time waiting. And I can demonstrate that here yeah, the file is not here. And I'm going to get it from NAS by using NAS object get videos and then give it the name. And when we press enter, you can see it's downloading it. Now we don't see anything on the screen above that tells us that it's been downloaded because that's not what that is for. But we can see the progress on the command line for this um, get command. So I'll speed up here to the end and you can see the files downloaded. And so that's it. I hope you learned something. Please leave some comment below. Let me know what kind of application you think you can use, like you know, object store for or your NAS key value or a combination of the two. Um, one simple use case here is imagine that you have a NAS server that you secure because we know to secure it with a username and password and you have it in the cloud. And maybe you take photocopies of important documents like your ID, passport, that sort of thing. And you upload it to your NAT server. And now when you go traveling somewhere, just in case, let's say you lose your ID or something and you needed you know, a copy of your ID really quickly to just really get the ball moving and get a new ID, you can just simply go to a cafe in that remote location or wherever you're traveling and just download that document. So this is a simple example you could use something like this. Now you don't need to deploy NATS in order to have this capability. Of course, you can have an AWS accountant do it. You can have a GCE accountant do the same thing or a Zero account. But just in case you don't trust any one of those and you want to keep all the management of your document under your control, this is an example of the kind of technology you can use to do just that. So in the next video, we'll see how to do the similar sort of thing from Go Code. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Take care. See you in the next video. Be safe. Bye.